Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> uh, we've, we're coming now to the good ground in the parable of the sower. Mm. And uh, I just put a nice log on the fire for you. Look, I could have usually we've got bits of pallet or chipboard, but I've actually, Andy said you're going to put a nice log on, so we've got a nice log for you on this coldish morning. Um, one thing that struck me the other day I wanted to say was very often when, we, when we're in Christ we don't often talk about the blessings that we all have and some of that partly is over my life has been because I realised that for instance a lot of my life I, I had a lot of depression and struggles and I didn't have a love and I didn't feel loved and so because of that I'm wary that there's people in this world that are not not fulfilled they, they don't feel blessed they don't feel happy they don't feel that they've got a purpose and so very often we don't get into um, like saying for instance that I've got this amazing wife or I've got four great children or I've got carpet on my floor I've got a car I've got food on my table and every day my life is better and better in Christ it's so great but we often neglect to say it because we're fearful of upsetting other people. But the truth is, I could have, I've been blessed all my life. Even when I was struggling, it's just that I was looking at the flesh. I was looking at my own life. I was being selfish. It's only since, in fact, even when I got married, I was still very selfish and still thinking about myself. And I didn't appreciate how good a wife or children or family home that I had for many years until I started to direct my path to the Lord. So, we're talking about the good ground, so do you want to read the little bit? I will. Um, so we're looking at Matthew 13, verse 23. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And so when it's saying that the seed is is received into good ground it's not saying that necessarily your background or anything worldly was good that makes you good ground your good ground is is your heart it's your understanding it's um, your desire to know the Lord it's not anything to do with anything in your past your present or your future um, it's all about you and your heart and your desire for God and so the word, the seed, that it's referring to, um, is received. So it's, it's taken in by those people who want to know God. Um, and because they want to know God and because they seek God, they start to understand the word. And because they understand, they then bear fruit. So what it's saying is that um, the word has be, been both... Um, understood and heard not just listened to but heard and understood and um, when it talks about bearing fruit it's talking about showing a true conversion a true belief a true move towards God um, and that and that evidence it, it says here in my my study bible that um the evidence may vary in its amount and but all true believers will produce yeah, some yeah. fruit so Amen. it may not be that as I said the other day mm. when we were talking it, it might not be you know that, that everybody is, yeah, yeah but just but going to shows, church and loving God yeah that's right it's great fruit yeah yeah the um the thing that being committed yeah the thing that struck me about this was as I was reading it was saying because it says about the word that you that you that you bear hear of the word and understand it and so it's not even from an educational point of view that yeah, you can no. say oh I understand this word yeah it's it's talking about this the, the the grounds you know there's different grounds and seed grows in good ground obviously everyone knows this and 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 it's it's obvious to understand well it is from a fleshly point of view but what God's talking about is it reminded me, because I was praying this morning, thinking about it, that Nathan, Nathan is told to go to David and tell him a parable, tell him a story about a man who had a, a ewe lamb, his only little lamb, 
and he brought it up, loved it, and nourished it. And it says he even had him in his bosom. So it's, it, it shows a beautiful picture of almost like a, a Christ lamb, this, this one lamb, this, this only lamb. And, and then David, and Nathan says that, um, and this rich man, uh, who could have took the lambs from the rich wealthier person. From his own flock. From his yeah. flock. He didn't. He took it from this poor man who only had one lamb. And he, and he dressed it and all that. And David... David's actually outraged. Yeah, he's, he's outraged. He says, he says well, that man, he, he's, he's a villain. Yeah. He's truly evil. He yeah, should he die should for die. what he's done. He should die. And then Nathan says, it's you. It's you, David. It's you, mate. And this is the good ground. Because what happens is, in my life, I've done things like, for instance, I've years ago, or well, not that years ago, probably last year, I've prepared a word... And I've been thinking, like, well, when I get to church and I bring this, this is going to kick some butt. This is going to put people right. And then the Lord said, oh, no, Gary, it's my size 10 up your backside. It's you. You're the person that's not listening. You're the person that's judging. You're the one reading these words, going up, praying, living your you God. And I think, just, no, I think that's quite true of a lot of people that bring words in yeah, church. Yeah, because yeah, when definitely. I brought the word on forgiveness, when yeah. You, you know, basically a lot of it was just testimony. Yeah, it yeah. was it was things where I had been given revelation that it was me that wasn't being forgiven, yeah. that it was me. And and again, last year with the busyness, it was yeah. me that was putting things mm. before God. It was me that was being too busy in my life and and letting worldly things take over. So. You know, when we when we talk about these things, a lot a lot of the time, it, it's actually it's actually yeah, yeah. It is. It we is. Exactly we are that. the ones that um, that are being spoken to, and yes, we we pass it on, and yes, it can mean be meaningful to other people. I, I brought a, a, a word at work the other day, mm. um, and and the lady came up to me afterwards and said. I'm really weeping and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what have I done to this poor old lady? I've, I've, I've really upset her. But in actual fact, she was weepy because she felt that the word that I had brought was actually really timely for her at that time. But again, it's it's talking about things that, that we know about. We can talk about them because it's something that, that we've, we've gone through. Or, or we or are we've, going through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, there's... there's well, I wrote them down, but I don't think that's I... not incidentally to say that we are good ground. No, we're no. trying. No, <laughs> well, we are it. good ground we're because we're reacting. Ground, but... We're reacting to God's word, and this is the thing. No, no we're not perfect. Um, Christians aren't, but real Christians, people that follow God, are being corrected. They're being chopped off. The the dead wood, the the unforgiveness, the judgment, the the um, looking at, at the world, the wanting or desiring the wrong things. They're the bad branches. And again, They're the world that's sitting chop off. And, and, then, and from that, we, we see the fruit. fruit we see the changes forward. in yeah. these people, yeah. which, again, may be small, may be big changes, but we see changes in people. They, they start to, um, to be different people. We are a new creation. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and again, with the seed going in, we've said before, you can't always tell. Um, very often it's other people in the Lord, in your church, that are, that are following God, that see this growth. And very often you can't see it yourself at all. Um, mm. yeah. But we should have a heart that wants to grow in Christ. We should have a heart that's bent towards him, that, that sees that we are sinners and we should be walking away from the things that we know we're doing wrong. It's no, it's no good to put your hand up and say... I know I'm judging people, or I know I'm doing it, but if you don't do anything about it, because God will keep correcting you, or keep putting it forward, saying, no, Gary, you, you, you're nearly there, or you're doing better, but you still, no, it needs to be gone, mate. You, you, it says we're free in Christ. It means you're free from the, the, the hold that sin had over man's life. That Adam has is, is got sin over his life, and he's held by it. And so are all the people in the Old Testament. But the ones that flee from it, they're the ones that know God. And like David, flee to the cave. But we, we flee to God, Jesus because he mm. forgave us. He's forgiven us. He's washed us clean. And now we are new creations in him. And so being free in Christ doesn't mean being free to grow whatever you like, the crops you choose. It's being free from the, the holding power of sin over our lives, the, the perpen, perpen, 
Propen Say what? it. What, which word do you want? Propen to? The propensity. Propensity. <laughs> The, the tendency to. Yeah, the <laughs> propensity and tendency to sin. It says that man loves darkness and he flees from the light. So when God shines the light on your heart, that seed coming in, he's saying, Gara or Andy or whoever, this is your area, mate. What Like Nathan, that's you, David. What are you going to do about it? Then Nathan reacts, uh, David reacts and says, that I, I have sinned against the Lord. The Lord tells him that he's yeah, um, against, despised him. Against only you. I only God, says, yeah. Only you are him. Only the Lord. And, and I think, just, just to quickly go back before we finish yeah. to the um, analogy of the, the good ground, the mm. soil, and, and plants. Now, we've got to remember that this is an analogy. It's a story that, uh, that is, is showing us something in, in our lives, and it's not really talking about soil and no. ground and plants, but... Looking at that particular analogy, when you have good ground and you plant a seed, the roots can go deep down mm. and they can get all the nutrients and all the food that they want. So when we're looking at this as an analogy of us in God, if we um, sink our roots deep into the word, we can get all the nutrients that we need. We can get Amen. all the food Amen. that we need in, to enable us to grow in mm -hmm. Christ. And so that's that's what it's talking about with good ground. Yes, Lord. Preparing your hearts, preparing your lives, and being able to receive the word. And once you, once you give your life fully to God, the Bible opens up. You might have tried to read it a dozen times or more and not been able to understand it. It's not gone in. And you've, you, you've maybe chucked it on one side. Keep picking it up. Keep picking it up because when you truly believe, when you truly give yourself to him, he will open up this word and it will become like food to you. You will understand every word in it and you will be able to feed from it and you will be able to grow in your faith. So be blessed, be encouraged and we'll speak to you again soon. Amen. Bye bye.